Hello, and welcome back to part three of this mini series on SOLIDWORKS surfacing for repairing files. I'm so glad you're able to join me. My name is Kaylee Gonzalez here with MLC CAD Systems. Now, this is the third and final part of this series. If you missed parts one and two, please feel free to go to our YouTube channel and check out those videos. You can see the examples used here where I fix the helical face of that yellow drill bit. And then the second part, we discussed how to repair broken fillet faces on imported part files. What we're gonna do in this video is kind of combine some of the techniques that we learned in the first two videos and apply it to this third situation. We're gonna be inserting a step file that has some additional faces and fillets. Maybe the fillets were not created ideally. We're gonna see some surfacing techniques to improve these fillets. So that's what we're going to start with. Let's jump into SOLIDWORKS. As you can tell, looking at the part file over on the left, we are working with an imported body. I do not have the entire history tree, which means I cannot go in and directly edit these particular fillets that you're seeing. What we are seeing are some extra faces. Maybe the transition is not as smooth as we want but we're gonna take a look at how we can fix that. One of the first things I'm gonna do in this example is I'm actually going to split this model. And I'm splitting this across the front and the right planes. The reason why I'm doing this is because this part is actually symmetrical about those two planes. I'm going to be able to fix the fillet in one quadrant and then re-mirror the items at the end so that the new fillet can propagate to the other remaining sections. First thing I'm going to do is let's use the delete face command to remove some of these additional faces and convert my part file to a surface body. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of additional 3D trim entities to finish trimming this section. What I'm doing now is a spline on surface. So it's going to adhere to that rounded fillet face in a 3D sketch. And I'm going to convert the remaining edge so that I have a nice edge to use as part of my trimming tool in this sketch. Once I'm done, I can use my trim surface command to remove that extra information. Now we have a couple of other pieces of information that we're going to use to trim this part file. I'm going to use convert entities on this pointed section. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to increase the tolerance on my fit spline and use it to round out this corner. Instead of having a very sharp edge, it's going to give me a single uniform spline, plus it's going to give me a rounded radius that I'm going to be able to use to get rid of that sharp corner. And when we zoom in, you'll see it is a small change, but these small changes can make big differences in our model. And we can use our trim surface to remove the sharp point, and we're left with a nice rounded curve in that section. Now we could perhaps make that a little bit more rounded, but we're going to leave with kind of the original shape of the fillet. I have one more trim I'm going to do. I'm going to go into a 2D sketch and I'm going to add a spline for this last section. And I'm going to add some sketch relations to this spline. You can actually add things such as vertical and horizontal sketch relations to spline handles as well as to the control points. This is going to guarantee that this spline is going to be tangent and have kind of that continuous curvature we would expect. And we can trim the excess material away. From here, I'm going into a 3D sketch. I'm getting ready to clean up my sketch profiles, which is what I'm going to be using to actually do a loft or a boundary surface. So typically what I've been doing is I will convert edges to sketch entities, and then I will add any remaining profiles and then start using a fit spline to clean it up. In this case, I have one more spline I'm going to add, and this is going to continue with that rounded segment. And I'm adding some continuous curvature sketch relations to this spline. Again, this 
equal or continuous curvature sketch relation is again going to help make sure this transition with the original faces and edges is going to be as streamlined and continuously curved as we can make it. I'm going to then go into my fit spline and I'm going to take this first profile, this top section, as well as one of the side curves and use my fit spline to streamline those particular edges. Once we're completed, we're ready to go into our boundary surface. And again, I'm using a boundary because it works extremely well when you have sketch entities in multiple directions. So I have these three profiles that I'm using for direction one, and then these items in pink are what I'm using for direction two. And this is going to match very, very well to the existing edges and sketch relations that I have. From here, I can use my knit surface to convert both of these into an actual solid. And we have fixed our fillet and converted our solid. So the only thing that we have left is to finish the part and do our mirror operations. So I'm going to use mirror body in order to finish up this part. And what we're going to notice is when I finish my mirror body operations, that one fillet that I went through the surfacing to complete was able to be included in the mirror to really clean up those fillets. Again, it's kind of scratching the surface on what we can actually do as far as utilizing SolidWorks surfacing to fix parts. If you have any questions about what you saw in this video or the other two videos, please feel free to reach out to us here at MLC CAD Systems. Glad to answer any questions that you may have. So thank you for your time and joining me in this mini series and have a great day.